Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one because we are in Poodles Advent Countdown. If you don't know what that is, 24 projects coming out to you, two a week, all the way through and into December. Had a load, still got more to come. And this is today's little box. It's a lovely little envelope punch ball box actually. And you can't really see the envelope, which is good because I didn't want it to look like an envelope punch ball box. I just wanted to make maximum use of small paper. And I really like this. I love the frosted floral paper. Absolutely stunning. You can see, I mean, because of all my spotlights that I've got on my desk, still in a bit to try and sort the lighting out. Um, it's just lovely because you've got this gorgeous frosted part to it and it's beautifully shimmery. And I like that it's gray and a toneless gray. So if I bring in this one, that's the other side of it. A toneless grey has no tone to it, it's essentially pale black. There isn't a blue to it or a pink or a purple, there's no other tone to it. And that means with a toneless grey, you can put any colour with it and it will work. Whether you like the look or not is, is you know, beside the point, but you can, any colour will work with it. And I have toneless grey in my kitchen, so I change my accessories in there pretty much every season or every couple of months so I might put a bright yellow with it one time or I might put red at the moment I've got purple in there and so a toneless grey means that you can add anything to it I wish I'd bought all my ribbons over I probably should have done but let me just grab what I've got handy works perfectly works perfectly also works perfectly let me move those out of the way works perfectly any color what have i got on my desk i've got some hand cream the blue works perfectly with it the purple works perfectly with it what else have i got more hand cream the lime green works brilliantly with it so a toneless gray like this anything works well with it. so our smoky slate is there is a bit of a blue a blue hue to our smoky slate but this is brilliant gray granite a little bit of a brown hue spot on however so i've put berry burst with this one because why not and i'm going to put pear pizzazz with this one but let's make the box okay so six by six inches 15 and a quarter by 15 and a quarter centimeters so if you're working with six by six paper rather than this beautiful stuff that's fine it'll work and you're going to punch and score twice on the first side well actually twice on all sides so two inches and four inches and if you work in in, in metric 5.1 and 10.2 centimeters so punch and score and then use the score line against this guide that you can see sticking out and that will line it up but it actually happens to be two and four all the way around because my little box is my paper's been divided by three on each side to make this work as a lovely pure box They're a great size, these little boxes. Um, I'll measure it up for you in just a second so you can see what size it is when it's done. Um, so it's uh, ooh, one and three eighths of an inch by two and a quarter inches. So in metric, that's six by three and a half. Good size boxes, but they hold a lot inside. When you're looking at it, you're like, oh, how can that all fit in there? It does, like the TARDIS. Right. So fold and burnish these score lines. What I quite like about this particular patterned paper is actually what's on the reverse. I mean, I love the entire pack and I love all sides of all of it, which is, you know, going some. But I like that this is quite plain and unassuming on the outside and then inside it's like, wow, look at the variety of colour. And I think your recipient would feel the same. But I do think the berry burst on the lovely grey is just, it's rather stylish. That's my feeling. Okay, so bits to cut away. We're not going to cut away anything, but cut straight down. And why did I wedge? I didn't need to wedge because it's a triangle. I don't know why I did that, but cut straight down, rotate, and cut straight down, rotate. 
cut straight down and rotate. You don't need to wedge at all. Making that up. Because <laughs> it's already wedged by the fact it's that shape. So it's going to fold in like that and become our box. Easy peasy. Right, let's get some adhesive on here. Um, oh, what shall I use? Um, I'm going to use my snail. If you're doing a cardstock version of this, don't use snail, it won't be strong enough. Um, but snail with paper to paper in these boxes actually works very well. Um, there's something in the frosting of the paper that makes snail stickier than normal. I don't know what it is, but it is. But yeah, it, if you're doing cardstock, snail wouldn't work. Use um, a stronger adhesive. Okay, so all closed up. Let's get our ribbon going. I'm sorry, there's a jet plane going overhead. That's okay. All those people off on their holidays. That'll be me soon. Seriously, can it make any more noise over my head? Okay, let's get a bow going. Oh, pulled the wrong one. There we go. Trim off the ends and then the little little bit of stamping I've got actually does come from the first frost stamp set. I really like, I just love the whole suite, it's really caught my attention. Um, and I'm going for the one that says wishing you all the best. Now I'm just going to measure it, so I want a piece that's three quarters of an inch. <laughs> two centimetres by two and a half inches. I'm on a, I'm not on, well I am on a flight path, I'm not near an airport at all. What did I say? Three quarters of an inch by two and a half. So yeah, that's no problem. So I'm going to trim this down. Three quarters of an inch by two and a half. So yeah, two centimetres by about six and a half centimetres. Did you hear everything in here rattling then? I'm sorry. If I knew how to mute, I would. I only know how to pause. Far too big a block, but it's okay. It's the one that's handy. So pear pizzazz ink. And I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna angle it off to the left because I want to snip and make a flag. Snip that down a bit more. So the way I do it is I cut into the middle and then trim from corner to corner and then it gets me a perfect flag. And then just to finish off some little frosted epoxy shapes and you've got plain ones and you've got the frosted ones as well. I used the frosted last time, I think I'll use plain this time around. And I have one big and two small I think, they don't run away. And then all to finish off, a couple of dimensionals away from the flag because the flag tail is going to stick off a little bit. Slide it under there. Why is my box wibbled? I pulled it too tight. I have. Lovely. Beautiful pear pizzazz or berry burst. I think that's really lovely. Oh, I'm happy. Toneless grey, that's what you're looking for, a toneless grey, and this one is it. So, thank you ever so much for joining me, hope to speak to you very soon, bye.